Jake, we got a little bit of time here, so let's keep going and talk about recessions, uh, which is really bringing it all together. We talked about what we've seen with markets, historical perspective, how to think about it going forward. Same thing with bonds, a little bit of inflation. But th does that lead us to this question? Are we going to are we going into a recession? And if so, what does that mean for us as investors on our portfolio? So let's address recessions here very quickly. And I got some numbers to do that. Um, let me set the stage here with the slide that we're looking at. So what we are looking at here is the growth of a dollar. Going back to a last recession we had, it was I think it was two ago, it was during that time period. I always call it 2008, 2009. But that time period where we had the GFC or the global financial crisis. And we're looking at the growth of a dollar uh, of an investment in stocks. Now, I want to bring some dates here into play here. Okay. This was uh, a recessionary time period. Now, let me tell you the date when it was announced that uh, we are in a recession. Official announcement. When it was announced. Yes. It was announced December 1st. Let's just call it December 2008. So that's going to be about right here. And that's announced, okay? We were told we were in a recession. Yep. And then when did it end? When did they tell us it was over? September 2010. September 2010. So kind of all the way right out here, okay? All right, so I'm going to ask a question rhetorically before we, I give you the rest of the data, which is what happens when we go into a recession? Do you wait and wait and wait? And then once the NBER says, okay, uh, we know when we started a recession, and then prices drop? Or do the markets say, hmm, we're aware of everything going on out there. We're reflecting what we think is going to be impacting ultimately corporate profits, and that's going to impact prices of those securities. So do you wait till you're told you're in inflation, or do markets already work towards that in advance? I mean, advance? markets, we saw it with the interest rate example that we did earlier. We've hammered it home repeatedly in webcasts. Markets are constantly incorporating information. Yeah. They're not waiting around for an official announcement of, oh, yep, we're in or we're out of a recession. So let's go back to our chart there again. I just told you when it was announced, December 2008, we were told we were in a recession. When did it start? December of 07. That was effectively when they came back and said, hey, here's when it actually started. Okay, well, by the time they told us we were in one, what happened to prices? They were down. They moved well in advance of when we were being told we were in a recession. Um, and let's just highlight the point with another slide here. Okay, let's go back to uh, the, the recession two years ago, back in 2020. So we're looking at a similar type chart here. Here's the performance of uh, the market during that year. Now, during that time period, uh, it was announced we're in a recession in June of 2020. And they told us it ended in July of 2021. Now, the actual start date, when they told us uh, they announced we were I don't even have one, July of 2021 on this chart. <laughs> yeah, you can't. <laughs> you have to draw it on the wall. That's right. Uh, over there, yeah. Uh, it was February of 20 is when it started. Yep. So again, I think our folks uh, get the point. But I, I, I love this chart because I think it's so incredibly valuable tool visually to see how the market is anticipating all of this looking forward. So I know there's so much talk about, are we going to be in a recession? Or are we not going to be in a recession? How is that going to impact our portfolio? I don't know. But the market's aware of this stuff. So it doesn't just mean, once it's said we're in one, that somehow prices are going to drop 20%. We know the challenges we have, and that's in prices today. Well, look at the, I mean, go back to this chart right here, and look when you're actually in, and look what's happening to markets, right? Constantly incorporating information. We remember what was taking place in February of March of, of 2020. And let's also remember, this was a very, very short recession. You know, the, the kind of the technical definition is, is that you get two quarters of negative GDP growth. That's one input. Let's remember that it's a group of economists getting together, taking in many different factors there. And so many times what you see is, is that when you are actually in the recession or when you're officially, you may always be out of that recession when it officially gets announced. Markets are instantly incorporating that into it. And in a very short recession, you saw that markets were pricing that stuff in almost instantly. So right now, are we in one? Are we out one? We don't know. But maybe part of the reason that we're seeing a drop in the price of the markets is it's incorporating the possibility that we may be going into one, or you know what? We may already be in one. All right, so let's go some resources. Um, I mentioned that earlier. We're going to highlight some things on our website, dimensional.com. Now, we're going to start with the first one, which there's a fantastic interactive chart on the website. Uh, Jake's going to go there. We'll highlight it in just a minute. And it goes through all the recessions that we've seen historically. 
and it's going to highlight out just a whole bunch of economic numbers around the respective recession. Here's what the market did. Here's what GDP growth was. Here's what inflation was, unemployment. And it's really interesting to go through and just kind of click on it and get a sense for what was going on in those respective recessions because it's not rinse and repeat. Each one is unique and different in that particular time period. So we're gonna highlight that interactive chart and then we're gonna highlight a couple of the other slides that we use today so you know where to go to be able to get these. So Jake, we all set on the website? All set to go here. Okay, so let's highlight, let's yeah. start with perhaps that uh, recession one. Certainly, and so what we're looking at here is this is the uh, public website that everybody has access to, whether that be a financial professional, individual investor, whoever's tuning into our broadcast. You can go to us.dimensional.com and go to this insights tab right here. And when you go to insights, you can see right over here on the right hand side, this perspective market returns through a century of recessions. This is a great interactive chart that the team here at Dimensional has put together. And what it's going to do is it's going to take a look at different recessions over the last century or so. And it's interesting to note that if you look at the last 100 years or so, we've actually been through quite a few recessions as investors. It's maybe not as uncommon as people think. It's painful when you're going through it, but we've been through plenty of these things in the last century or so. And I love going to this chart here because what you can do is you can go back and you can look at individual recessions here. So we can take a look back here at the one. Let's go right here. Hang on one sec. And we'll take a look at Great Depression and what we see in terms of some data there. And you're going to get awesome numbers in terms of what was industrial production, what was inflation, what was unemployment, how long did it last for, what's the market downturn, peak to trough. And Mark, you brought up a great point earlier, which is that each one of these is going to look a little bit different. The cause of it can be different, what inflation is during it can be different, what GDP contraction is, how long it can last for, the market peak to trough. It's really interesting when you go in and break those down that there isn't this cookie cutter recession of what we go through. Yeah, so spend a little time on that, check it out. Let me highlight the 1991, Jake. I think that's the Gulf War one. You got that pulled up there. And again, you look at that area in green, so that is the actual time period of the recession. Now, I want to highlight one thing here. That's when it's officially started and ended. But remember, for me, the real issue is when were we told about the recession? So you look at that time period that, on that 1990, it was announced that we're in a recession in April of 1991, which was after the recession was over officially. Right. So again, that point about Markets anticipating a lot of these kind of things. So just great examples all throughout there. Very fun chart to flip through and kind of get perspective on what we've seen in various Well, for sure. And we just showed earlier in terms of that peak to trough in the stock market. I mean, look what's happening there, right? That recession's officially kicked. Hasn't been announced, but it's happening. And that market's starting to price it in. That's a great chart. Great interactive piece that everybody's got access to. All right, let's highlight a couple other pieces here as we round out uh, the day. Yeah, let's go back to the Insights tab. Again, everybody's got access to this, but I'd highly encourage you all to follow the links that we'll send out afterwards. And great resources from Dimensional here that are going to give perspective on many things that are happening in the world. You know, you see that one right there, the uh, third one in terms of what happened when you fail at market timing. That's some of that data that we showed mm -hmm. in terms of missing the best week, missing the best month. Really good one there. Are we headed for a recession? That's going to have some additional data of what we just highlighted and giving perspective that markets are really forward looking. Uh, David Boos got a great piece, What's Your Plan for the Bear Market? Anytime you get a chance to read a Booth piece, I would highly recommend it. Some more stuff down here on is there a light at the inflation tunnel? We got some stuff on FANG stocks, which by the way, will probably come back in a future webcast. Uh, and then this history shows that stocks can add up after big declines. Mark, that's some of those numbers we showed of after declines of 10, the 20% we showed and others, what do you see one, three, and five years out? Yeah, yep. so fantastic resources. Uh, be sure to check them out. We'll be sending you the links uh, when uh, after this webcast so you can have easy access to them. Okay, Jake, we got a minute and a half left, and so we're going to use all of it here. And let's just go back. We always talk about, so what do we want to keep in mind as investors? What gives us the best chance of success over time? If we knew the future, we'd be trading like crazy, knowing what's coming. Nobody does. So what do you do that gives you the best chance? And let's just walk through some of these. Yeah, let's just hit a couple of these quickly. And, and we'd love to, to really focus on this point of it's always different. We talked about how, hey, the uh, causes of the recession, the data points within a recession are always different. The global events that are taking place, I don't think anybody expected a global pandemic. That was different, right? Do you expect these downturns that we got in the first half of the year? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. 
But remember, it's always going to be different, but you can come back to some fundamental principles of investing. Yep. And we got some questions coming in, too, in advance, even today, of, well, what's Dimensional doing differently in this environment that we're in? How are we going to think about the war uh, going on? And it goes back to those fundamental principles of, do we know anything that nobody else knows? Do we know the future? No. So what are we going to do to manage our shareholders' money in the most efficient way possible? And we're going to stick to what we do. We're going to stick to the strategies and make sure we implement them and manage them very flexibly every single day. So that's what we're going to do. And our systems are built for volatility. They're built for time periods when prices go up and down very, very quickly. That's when, uh, quite honestly, we're at the best relative to others out there. So it's always different for us, too, but we stick to what we're going to do in our portfolios. That's right. You know, another thing to remember is, is that uncertainty and returns are related. It's not pleasant to have a market drop. It's not pleasant to not, uh, pleasant to, to not necessarily know when inflation is going to be. Is a recession coming? What's going to happen in the bond market? Remember why you get a return as an investor, you bear uncertainty in some form. But also remember that expected returns and realized returns can look very different. We expect every day and every single year to get positive returns in the stock market and the bond market. Reality is, is it doesn't always shake out that way, but as that time period extends, you start to see those positive returns line up a little bit more with expectations. Uh, this one I think is so true. I think there's most investment questions are market timing questions. I'm concerned about a 20% drop. I'm concerned about inflation. I'm concerned about recessions. The question is, how do I get the good and how do I avoid the bad? If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. And kind of a summary one here to drive home the point of, you're probably better off having a logical approach look at the evidence, stay diversified, and focus on the long term. Yep. Okay, great summary. Uh, everybody, just thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully, it gave you some helpful perspectives on what we've been through and how to think about things going forward. <laughs>